Hello, so welcome to a new reading vlog. To be honest, I actually filmed this intro already and now it's near the end of the vlog, but I filmed while it was raining really heavy and I forgot to plug in my microphone and so um, it's really awful to listen to. So I'm not going to put you through that, but let me tell you what I'm going to be reading this week or what I've already read. Uh, so firstly, I have a bunch of library books that I want to get to. Actually, this one as well. Uh, these are all due back next week. It's actually this week because it's already Monday, but uh, they're due back soon and I've been returning a lot of my library books late lately and I feel really bad, especially for the ones that are newer releases because I know there's other people waiting for them. So even though there's not fines anymore, I still want to get through them. So these are the ones I've got. Uh, firstly, I've got One Girl in All the World. This is the second book in like a Buffy the Vampire Slayer story. So this follows Frankie, who is a new slayer. Uh, she's also Willow's daughter and a witch. And in the first book, like all the slayers went missing for some reason. It's not really clear what happened to them. And she's very unprepared to become a slayer. And in the second one, we're still kind of tracking down what's happening with those slayers, as well as I'm trying to think, what did I know about this going into it? Pretty much nothing. So let's just go with that's the introduction. Actually, maybe I had already started it when I started this blog and I was a little bit confused about the target market because it has a lot of the old characters in it. So you think maybe it's focusing on people who might be reading it for nostalgia, but at the same time, it is also very YA uh, and even the adults feel very YA. And I don't mean that as a criticism. I just mean like as an older person, uh, some of those themes and ideas are a little bit hard to relate to. But anyway, I've already read it so it's hard to pretend like I haven't but anyway I'll tell you in the next clip what I've thought about that. I also have uh, the latest Babysitter's Club graphic novel adaptation. So the Babysitter's Club was a series I loved as a kid. I guess these are both like nostalgia reads really. And the Babysitter's Club is just like this club of babysitters. This is the 13th graphic novel adaptation and it's Marianne's Bad Luck Mystery. Um, this is actually the 17th book of the original series, but they haven't been doing like a one-to-one -one mapping. I'm not really sure what the logic is around it, but I've really been enjoying these series. They're just really nostalgic for me. And then lastly, I have this one, Swordbearer, which is actually the eighth book in the Tiger and Dell series, which is a series like, I think it started maybe even in the 90s. You know, I have the, I have these bind-ups of the original series. Let's see, when was it originally published? 1989 oh my goodness this series started so long ago and then this is the eighth book I didn't even know we were expecting an eighth book uh, but in this one they're kind of quite young Del comes down from the snowy north to ask Tiger to help her find her missing brother and then through the series they have all sorts of uh, adventures they're both uh, sword dancers, so basically just sword fighters. Also, Tiger is quite uh, a bit like a manly man, and Del kind of has to wrangle him to be less of a dick. Um, and in this, like, he's still a very manly man, but now they're both kind of 40-ish, and they've got a kid that they're looking after, and they've been trying to set up the sword dancing school. But of course, there's always problems. And really, that's all I knew going into this, is that there was going to be problems. And also, I was expecting to enjoy the fact that they're older characters, so maybe slightly more relatable than either of these two, for me. As well, I do have a couple of audiobooks that are both uh, series, which I will be completing, because they're both duologies, or so far they're duologies. So firstly I've got A Slight of Shadows by Cat Howard which is the sequel to An Unkindness of Magicians. Uh, in the first book we had this tournament between the different magical houses and several people involved in that tournament were trying to change the way that the power structures within this magical unseen world worked. Uh, so both the way that magical power worked as well as political power. And in the second book it's really focusing on, I'm trying to remember what I said in the next clip, Anyway, it's mostly focusing on like, how do you maintain those power changes? Like it's not necessarily as easy as you might think. And as well, I have the audiobook for Assassin of Reality, which is the sequel to Vena Nostra. Vena Nostra I reread recently and I absolutely loved it. It's such a strange story about this woman who, on a holiday with her mother, runs into this man who starts asking her to do really strange tasks. And through doing these tasks, she ends up getting admitted into this Institute of Special Technologies and at the school they ask them to do very strange things and if they're not doing well then there are negative consequences for their loved ones and in Vida Nostra things got like so strange all this metamorphosis stuff and like 
just amazing concepts. So I was really excited to be getting to that one. And so that's lots, lots of books that I'm excited to be getting to. And hopefully then I'll be caught up on a bunch more of series and a bunch of library book reading. And I think that's it for the intro. So I'll see you again near the end of the video. Hello. So firstly, let me acknowledge that my hair color has changed uh, probably temporarily because I'm just experimenting with different things and this is not really what I want, but maybe it will be what I want once I do some more experimenting. Uh, as well, I managed to like put this big stain down my face and I've tried to cover it up, but it's really not working, um, which is not great because I'm about to go out into the world. So Oh well. <laughs> I guess those people are going to know that I'm bad at dyeing my hair. Uh, I'm just going to go up to the local shops where they see me with different coloured hair all the time. So probably they'll just be like, oh that girl. She's always changing her hair colour. Anyway, what else has been happening? It has still been raining a lot, but it does seem like maybe we're going to get a few sunny days coming up. I'm really hoping so because I'm kind of sick of just being stuck around the house. We did actually go for a walk yesterday and we got stuck in the rain. Anyway, I want to update you on my reading. So firstly, One Girl in All the World. I am now, oh, getting very close to the end. So I'm on page 262. I think it's about 350 pages, 340 pages. So less than 100 pages to the end. And to be honest, when I put it down to go to sleep last night, I was just starting to get into what I think is going to be the exciting bit. Like, so in the first book, I was actually very frustrated because for some reason, we don't really know what's happening. All the other slayers have gone missing or been killed. We don't really know what's happened to them. And I was really frustrated in the first book that we didn't really learn anything. And we're only just starting to figure out right near the end a little bit of what's happened to them, which is the part of the story that I'm really interested in. Uh, the rest of it has really been focused on a lot of the relationships. So I think these books would be really great for like younger readers or readers who are interested in like fun friendships with relationships of all sorts of different sexualities. It's really, you know, there's a lot of talk about the different relationships, which just for me is not an interesting focus, or at least I don't mind stories that include that as long as it's incorporated into the bigger fantasy plot or if there's some complexity to it, which for me there isn't really in this. As well, like, I'm just really frustrated with all the adults basically acting like teens and their relationships being like teen relationships. But I think if you see the target market for this book as younger readers, then that does make sense. And I can still see you wouldn't really pick this up without having watched Buffy first. So even if you're a younger reader, then you could watch Buffy, really love it, and go straight into this. And I think you'd like it. There's definitely parts where the humour is pretty authentically Buffy. But I also sometimes don't know if that style really carries into the written form as well as it did in televised form. Really, for me, the most interesting thing that this book has introduced is the idea. Uh, so at the end of the bigger Buffy TV show, uh, Buffy makes it so that all potential slayers will automatically become slayers. And it's meant to be like a really empowering thing. But in this book, we're kind of talking about how some of those slayers feel like they're now being forced into being slayers. And like, what if they just want to live normal lives? They don't want to be going out and being forced to save people and to sacrifice themselves for others. Uh, which I think is a really interesting idea, and I would have loved it to be explored more in this. But so far, not so much. So I guess we'll see what happens in this last little bit. And I, I'm still assuming this is a trilogy, so I guess they'll continue that theme in the third book. Anyway, I'm going to try and finish this off tonight. The other thing, so this morning I finished cleaning the front part of my deck. I'm so happy I still have a tiny bit at the back, my smaller deck, but uh, I've been cleaning my deck honestly for I feel like a couple of months now. It's taken so long, so I was very happy to finish that and the only reason I finished that is because I had a good audiobook to listen to while I was doing that, which distracts me from like the tedium of it and like motivates me to keep going instead of like stopping and saving the rest of it for another day. Anyway, the audiobook I was listening to was A Slide of Shadows. I'm really enjoying it. I did look at some reviews and I saw that overall the ratings for this book aren't as good as the original book. And I feel like that's maybe that some people feel like this book is lacking 
in the excitement that you got from the first book with the murder mystery and the magical tournament. Whereas in this one I feel like the stakes are a lot less clear, even though they, they are still high stakes. But it's more that in the first book there were some changes made to the power structures of the world and this book's really exploring how that isn't a quick and easy change. You can't just make like one grand sacrifice and then it's done. You have to keep working to keep those new power structures in place and like figuring out how all the new things are even going to work. And I'm really enjoying like how all our characters are struggling with that in different ways. Uh, and there's still more of a look I think in this book than in the first book about the cost of magic and deciding whether that cost is actually worth it, especially if you're having to do really awful things in order to do magic. So I'm just having a great time hanging out with these characters. I'm just always so hopeful that they're going to get a happy ending, but will they? I don't know. I, I expect not all of them will. So uh, that's another one I'm going to try and finish off. I want to finish it off tonight because I'm really enjoying it, but I don't know if time will allow that. But anyway, I will check in with you again when I finish those two. Maybe I'll also finish this. Maybe I'll start some other things. Maybe I'll change my hair color. Who knows? Oh, hello. So it is one of those like freezing sunny days today, but in my car, which has just been sitting here in the sunshine, it's so warm. I just want to like curl up in here like a lizard or something. But anyway, I came to the mall. I dropped off my last big box of stuff that I decluttered maybe my last box i've still got a few other random little things but i can bring them in whenever i just walk to the mall or whatever so i feel like i'm making good progress with my decluttering we're almost done even anyway i did want to update you on my reading so last night i finished off reading uh one girl in all the world and like actually the ending was pretty exciting i think just because instead of being focused on the relationships it was more focused on the plot and there's a fair amount of action though i would say like earlier in the book there were a bunch of like vampire fight scenes so you could call the action but if it's action that doesn't further the plot to me it doesn't feel like action it just feels like tedium uh so <laughs> i did really enjoy the ending though uh we had a lot of action we had a lot of movement in the plot i still wish that things had gotten a little bit further but i understand it's meant to be a trilogy so we need to save something for the last book i uh, also though at the end there was almost like an introduction of a new theme or like i think it was actually more of a theme in the first book like frankie feeling very unsure about being a slayer and like at the end of this it kind of brought in this theme of her not feeling like her watcher was supporting her and i just was a bit confused about why that was brought in right at the end and like it wasn't really important to the story at all it wasn't developed much uh, as well i do want to say like each chapter in this book has like a little chapter heading a chapter title and I thought the chapter titles were all a lot of fun. Uh, I really like it when books do chapter titles, actually. Shush! Anyway, uh, I guess this wasn't my favourite. I just think I'm not the target demographic, but I did enjoy the end of it. So, that's good. Uh, as well, I read A Slide of Shadows, finished that off. I really enjoyed it. The only thing I'm frustrated about is I just think it was too short. There were so many cool ideas in it that just never really got explored, uh, like these bone trees and like what really happens with a magician once they've died. I feel like so much more could have been done with that than what it was. As well, uh, we have these new students who've been brought into magic and one of them especially has been taken advantage of and misled and put in a really horrible situation and we barely got any of what that experience was like for her and just like overall like i like the characters i like the world but i i just wanted more so like it was great i really loved it but also like i wanted more i don't know how else i can say that and i don't even know whether there is a plan to write a third book in that series or not or whether that's it who knows i would really like to get some more so fingers crossed but also like at the end of the first book i felt like i don't know what more story there could be and i kind of still feel like that but also like i'm sure there is more so give it to me also this morning i did go for a run and i started listening to assassin of reality i think i'm about a third of the way in and i am really liking it there have been some lines where i've been really mad that i'm listening to the audiobook i really need physical copies of these books because there's just some lines that i think are so beautiful or like so 
interesting and just some concepts that I really like to sit and reflect on. I don't think audiobooks are really the best way to consume books like that even though I don't mind these audiobooks but I just think there are some lines that I could enjoy more physically so one day one day uh, but for now I'm enjoying the audiobook so basically at the end of the first book our main character had her, like her final exam uh, or like her exam for her third year I think but there's still a fourth year to go so something went wrong in that exam but she doesn't entirely remember it so basically now she is uh, doing these error correction classes where she has to try and figure out what she did wrong in the exam. Uh, there's also been some really cool manipulations of time, which I still don't feel like I fully understand, which is again why I wish I had the physical book so I could like check what what did it really say? Does it really make sense? I, I don't know, but I'm enjoying it regardless. Uh, and I haven't picked up any of my other physical books yet, but I will when I go home. Honestly, I still just want to sit here in the sun, but I guess I'll go home. I guess. Hello, so a quick reading update since I'm about to film anyway. Uh, yesterday I did read Marianne's Bad Luck Mystery and I enjoyed it. I do have a few things though. Like, as always, I just feel very nostalgic about this book series because the original Babysitter's Club books were like my favorite as a kid and just like seeing the graphic novel adaptations is a fun time. But I will say like reading this as an adult, I don't know if I went back and read the original, whether I'd feel the same, but instead of feeling like, wow, these girls are really mean and why are they talking about the babysitters behind their back and like doing tricks on them, instead of feeling like that, like I was like, wow, the babysitters club are kind of like one of those cliquey cool girl groups that aren't very nice to other people. And so instead of feeling like the other girls were the bad girls, which I'm pretty sure is how I felt when I was a kid, instead of feeling like that, I'm like, wow, Teenage girls, huh? So much drama. I remember all the drama from when I was a younger teenage girl, to be honest. Anyway, as well, so right at the beginning, Marion gets this chain letter in the mail, which is like, if you don't forward this letter to like 20 people, then you'll get bad luck for all your friends and your loved ones. And it's a little bit weird because some of these books have had things kind of adapted to a more modern age. Whereas I don't feel like, does anyone do physical chain letters anymore. I don't even think I've ever really heard about them. I remember when email was new you would get those chain emails all the time but is that even a thing anymore? I don't think so. I think it's more you get those stupid social media posts that like my mum and my aunties are always posting <laughs> which is like you need to share this post or otherwise your Facebook account will be shut down. But like actual chain letters? I don't think that's a thing anymore so I was kind of surprised that that wasn't modernized in some way although I do admit it would be hard to fit social media into these books because like then so much would change and as well like these young kids should be having parental supervision on social media at the age that they are especially because they're very responsible young girls. Uh, another thing that I found strange and I always found this strange about the original Babysitter's Club books as well is the timing of things. So they decide they're gonna have this sleepover, even though they're really doing something else naughty. But they decide they're gonna have the sleepover and they tell their parents, Charlie's gonna pick us up at 10.30 to go to the sleepover. Is that a sensible thing, like being picked up at 10.30 at night to go to a sleepover? Like when I was 12 or 13, I would have been asleep already. I just, I found that very strange that the parents would be like, yeah, sure, have them pick you up at 10.30 at night. What? Anyway, it was a fun story and I enjoyed the nostalgia. Uh, then, just before bed last night, I did start Sorbera, but to be honest, I only got about 30 pages in before I fell asleep because I was way too tired, uh, but I was really enjoying it. Uh, basically, we've gotten Tiger and Del, and they're looking after a two year old and they've kind of got this little community around them uh, in the desert. So in this world there's the north where it's all snowy and the south it's all desert like. I know that that makes a lot of sense for you northern hemisphere people. For southern hemisphere people like it always feels backwards to me but anyway uh, even though they're in the south they wake up and suddenly it's snowing which doesn't make any sense because it doesn't snow in the desert. It's never snowed there as long as they can remember and they're suspicious that it's magic. Then really they're just struggling with all the snow and also looking after a two-year-old while they deal with all the snow. So I really like the way that like looking after the two-year-old was incorporated into like, oh, 
not only is this difficult but it's even more difficult because we're trying to keep this two-year-old happy uh, also i just really like like it's written in first person from tiger's point of view and he's like this at this point he's kind of an old crotchety man but really focused on just wanting to do his sword dancing and have a good life and always kind of grumpy about magic and it's funny that even after so many books he's still so skeptical about magic even though he's seen so much of it and even done so much of it himself but I'm just enjoying being back in his head which always it's strange to me because in a lot of ways he's like a typical manly man but I like how Del keeps him in line and just like how he's always trying to do better anyway I will be continuing this later I guess I haven't read much more of Vena Nostra, a tiny bit. I am still really enjoying it. There's just some lines that I've really loved. I, I think the overall plot is a bit, uh, maybe not as good. <laughs> Although in the first book, like I never had any idea what was going on. I think the thing is in the second book, I have a much clearer idea of going on, even though none of it really makes sense, but it does given the context that you have. It's a strange book. But I'm loving it so hopefully I'll get some more time to listen to that today as well. Hello! So it's Monday now and I have not finished my week's reading that I wanted to do last week but it's fine. I am halfway through Swordbearer and I'm really enjoying it. I will say uh, something I always liked about this series is how Del works to like change Tiger's mind and like make him less sexist and understand a broader perspective which he's a lot better at now but I do get annoyed now when Del still kind of has to be that person reminding him about things because I'm, I think I'm kind of frustrated that she's still having to put in that emotional labor even though like He's, he's putting in the work too. So I do like their relationship. Uh, there's been a lot more weather type disasters and so they're trying to track down the source of this magical problem. Uh, and to be honest a lot of the book so far has just been random things happening. Some actual like weather magic disasters but also just like regular troubles. And at the same time Tiger doing a lot of philosophizing about his life and about his magic uh, which he really struggles with. So like that, the actual story is quite slow and since I'm halfway through and not much has happened yet in terms of story, I feel like maybe there's not going to be much story in this. So like I'm having a good time with this but I, I actually don't know if in the end I'm going to feel like we needed another book in this series or not. I guess we'll see once I finish this. Uh, what I did finish though is I finished listening to Assassin of Reality and like I it's so hard because I want to say like I really loved it. There's some lines and some concepts in there that just had me thinking so much and like I, I really just want to already read it again like physically and like just imagining underlining all those lines that I love and just like <sighs> sitting with them and enjoying them. But also like objectively I think it wasn't as good a story as the first book. I, I just think a lot of the wonder and the unknown from the first book was missing from the second book and I didn't feel like the ending was really as satisfying as the first book even though to be honest when I finished the first book the first time I had no idea what even happened but somehow that was more satisfying than this ending of the second book where I feel like I understood what happened but it just wasn't like as mind-blowing as the first book but I still really loved it so I don't know. Anyway, not much else is going on so I guess I will just update you when I have finished this one. Lazy Sunday mornings hiding under covers I don't mind staying in with you Play a favorite movie Laying right beside me I don't mind when it's just us two The corner coffee shop we like to go Late night walks with you to take me home With you I never feel alone These little songs Make me glad to call you mine and you have got my head in the clouds oh. One, two, three All that I need is your body next to me on rainy days Just need your company, don't need too much Just your 
Hello. So today we went to the beach and honestly I feel like we haven't been to the beach in so long because we've been just so busy doing house stuff. It was really nice even though it did rain on us. Uh, but anyway I have just finished Sword Bearer so I wanted to update you and I have to tell you how the ending kind of made me annoyed because it didn't really end things. So firstly there's kind of this big thing where all this magical weather stuff is happening and they're trying to track down the source of it uh, and that part really ended about page 200 and then there was still like another 70 80 pages to go and at that point we kind of like there was another thread introduced earlier and it kind of followed along with that so it's, it was still connected but it was a little bit weird and I wish it had been kind of constructed in a more cohesive way um I just got distracted by an annoying like cold call phone call and now I don't remember what I was saying um yeah I just kind of feel like there were two storylines kind of stuck together and almost the more significant one was given less weight although actually I feel like both storylines were given not enough weight. Uh, the ending, the first ending that was 200 pages in felt like there wasn't enough to the story. As I said I think earlier we're kind of like doing all these little troubles along the way rather than anything cohesive and then the end bit again didn't feel cohesive and then the very ending like it kind of tried to be a surprise ending which I guess you have to when you've only got like I was only 20 pages from the end and we weren't at the end so it kind of tried to do a surprise ending but also that wasn't an ending and there is a bit of a hint in the author's note right at the end that she's going to continue writing books in the Tiger and Dell world which is great I love it because I did enjoy spending time with Tiger and Dell and like all the other people that they have around them but also like could you not have at least wrapped up this story especially because this is only 275 pages so like it could have been a little bit longer and I think it could have been better and I don't really understand why it wasn't longer so yeah I I don't know I like spending time with Tiger and Dell I think anyone who's enjoyed the Tiger and Dell series like the seven books before this you would like this it does have some interesting extensions to the magic and just like spending more time with Tiger and Dell but the actual like story hmm, could have done with some work so let's wrap up everything that I read this week Swordbearer kind of enjoyable but not everything I might have hoped it to be. Both of these like nostalgia reads that probably weren't amazing but they were okay. Then we had my audiobooks which I think were the big one this week so A Slide of Shadows I really enjoyed it. I don't think it quite lived up to the first book but I still think it was very enjoyable and I really do hope we will get more books in that world at least a third book. And then the same for Assassin of Reality it didn't quite live up to the first book Vita Nostra but it was still amazing and honestly I'm still thinking about it even though it's now several days later and I'm, I'm definitely going to be rereading those books at some point in physical form so that I can like really just soak in all those lines that I enjoyed. So do let me know if you've read any of the books that I talked about in this video because I would love to talk with you about them down in the comments or let me know if there's anything exciting you've been reading lately Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are doing well and I will see you next time.